What's up guys? It's your boy Tom and in this video we have a live interview with Matt Chang. What's up man? How are you doing today? Pretty good man. It's a Friday. How you been? It's a long weekend for you guys in the States, right? It is 4th of July. So yeah, interesting time. This is but this is no this is like no other 4th of July. I think maybe a lot of people will try to stay in. I heard the cases the states is picking up but regardless let's 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 dive into the the good stuff so matt you know w when we first got in touch um i think i came across you on instagram and uh at the time i was trying to get a little bit more into fitness and then you were giving me some advice and then i looked on your page and i saw this video of this absolutely insane body transformation that you had it was like what three months transformation yeah, yeah, it's actually a Goal Gym 90 day challenge. Right, and then I looked at a video and I was like, holy shit, this is absolutely insane. And um, I'm like, yeah, man, tell me what to do and I'll do it. But regardless, you were like, hey, by the way, um, you inspired me to kind of start the Amazon FBA journey. And I was able to reach like $1.5 million in sales in the first like year and a half or something like that. And I was like, that's absolutely crazy. So, so I wanted to have you on, I wanted to, understand your story. I wish I can say you are a student of mine, but you're not. But uh, that just goes to show you guys that you actually don't need an Amazon FBA course to be successful on Amazon. But Matt, what I want to do is kind of talk to you about uh, talk to everybody about your story. Um, I want to know, uh, you know, what happened to you before Amazon, you said you had like a near death experience, I want to learn a little bit about that. I want to learn a little bit about your health and wellness stuff. And I want to learn about, you know, how were you able to go from zero to $1.5 million on Amazon in 18 months? Because that's an incredible achievement. So you want to just give everybody maybe a quick intro of who Matt is for those that don't know who you are? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I got started in the game, like I said, about 18 months ago. Um, before that, I was in the, the tech world. So I was in, in corporate America. And I actually, I had a pretty good job. Like I had a pretty good six figure paying job. I would travel for work. Um, uh, it, was a, it was a really good time. Uh, but then like after a while, I literally, I started killing in the game. And uh, I was going to my boss and been like, hey man, I wanna do a review and so on. And uh, literally, uh, would get like rejected for like any type of promotion or anything. So I was like, you know what? Screw this. I'll, I'll go look for my own promotion. So I started like Googling, uh, you know, how to make money on the side and so on. And then, you know, I was like, <laughs> okay, there's, there's real estate and so on. But then I live in Southern California and the average house is like 800 grand. I was like, all right, that doesn't work. So I just kept going and then finally came across FBA. When was and, this? Uh, huh? What, when was this? Better. This was probably uh, like fall of 2018. Fall of 2018. Okay. Yeah. So then I kind of went down the rabbit hole and then um, just watched every YouTube video I could. Came across your channel and watched everything. Even you're though like, I oh, did, you're like, oh, this Asian guy. I gotta, I gotta watch what he has to say, right? Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh man, this Asian guy is a film, <laughs> man. I gotta, I gotta follow this guy. So, <laughs> you know, low key watched a lot, you know, all your videos and so on. And the thing is, like, dude, you threw you used to throw gems out there, man. Like compared to a lot I of the used other to. Gurus. Oh, you still oh, do. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. Wow. Wow. He just said I, I used know. to throw still gems. Throwing out there. Ball. I mean, you still throw gems out there that I use today. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh I, I will say though, I will say the stuff that I used to post are like holy crap. I had no filter. I would literally go through like everything I'm doing. I would just put so much of the, like everything I'm doing on YouTube. But the thing now is that I have a course and if I just keep throwing those free stuff on YouTube, my students gonna be like, what, like, dude, I just paid you like a couple thousand bucks, like, and I can get all this. So I, I gotta, I gotta kind of filter through the information now. You know what I mean? There's more, yeah, of a, yeah, yeah. there's more yeah. of an agenda now, but I, at first it was the innocent Tom just like sharing as much as possible. But anyway, continue on. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I get it. But um, for me, like, I've always been the type, I was just like, you know, a lot of people procrastinate. And then I was like, I'm just gonna do it. So I just, I just started ordering products. I started going to Alibaba, you know, order the whole products. And I just started throwing a uh, product. I threw like two products up there. And then without anything, like I started to see some sales come in. And I was like, damn, I'm sold. So then I just committed like I went in. 
and I had a little bit of cash. Like I had uh, a pretty good size to start with, but then I treated it as like, uh, like I had nothing. Like I sold everything, like mm. anything I didn't need. I had this mentality was like, either I succeed or I die trying. Like mm. there's no plan B, there's no plan C, there's no safety net. It's like either I succeed with this or I'm done. That's how, like the mindset I had. Mm -hmm. So I sold everything, like TV, couch, uh, extra computer, whatever it was. <laughs> and then I just put all that towards uh, like samples, inventory and everything. And so uh, the problem with that was I didn't know what I was doing. So the problem I, with that I, is you couldn't, you didn't have a couch to sleep on when you want to, when you want to watch Netflix, you don't have a couch to sit on. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, shit, yeah. I sold my couch. <laughs> so uh, here's the thing. Like I, I failed, man. I failed miserably. Like. I failed my first three products and like, dude, I was down like 25 grand mm. and it was bad. And I was like, dude, what did I get into? Mm -hmm. So this is where it comes back around. Yes, you can do it without a course, but you're going to have a, you're going to have a tough road going ahead. So if, for everyone out there, I would recommend getting a course and uh, I, I would definitely get um, a course to start out. Cause that's going to save you a world of headaches yeah. uh, in the beginning. So yeah. Um, I should have joined your course in the beginning. I made that mistake, man. Man, I wish you did, because now I can be like, I got, I got another guy. My buddy Dan, he did. He's actually, I think, on the same. He, I think, is around the same, same um, uh, range as you. Like he's, it's been about eighteen months, and he's done about probably one point five. So you guys are kind of like head to head. But it would be nice to have another, you know, someone else to be like, hey, like here, I got another guy. But I mean. 1.5 million in 18 months that's absolutely insane that's like crazy numbers um like i don't in any sort of business it's not just like amazon fba right but um anyway sorry continue on yeah yeah so i, I did i feel miserably and this is the time around uh it's like what is it probably when i was doing that 90 day challenge for fitness so i just i just kept going like for me, it's like, I knew if you just keep grinding and you just keep at it, I mean, you're going to fail. Like I knew, like I've been through enough stuff in life. It's like, everyone's going to fail. It's just like the people that succeed are just people who keep grinding and keep going regardless of how hard it is. So I just kept going. And then uh, I did that 90 day challenge. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to get everything right in my life. I'm going to get my health on track. I'm going to get, uh, you know, everything. So I made a commitment. I was like, I'm going to wake up at 430 every morning. I'm um, hit the gym. I'm um, be on point with everything. And then, uh, you know, things started to turn around and actually this is you tie in here. So I can give you some of the credit for this is, uh, I was doing a product and then I remember you recommended, uh, one of these, I forgot who it was FBA makeover or whoever yeah. it was. Yeah. Yeah. That used to be one of my companies actually, but I yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you said to get your listing, right. And your 3d renders and everything. And so I just, you know, I, I went with the service and did that. And then that was my first product that just went bam and changed everything. Wow. Like right out of the gates, I think I was doing my first two months, I was doing like 50 grand per month on just wow. one product. So then ever since then, like, all right, it's like, there's a formula to this. And I think this is where a lot of people will get, go wrong is they, they think they can do everything and you can't, like, you cannot do everything in this game. You got to outsource what you're not good at. And that's the, I had trouble because I was trying to do everything. I was trying to take photos. I was trying to do the copywriting. And I'm like, I'm terrible at this. Like, <laughs> that's when you know you just have to outsource it. So, like, for me, like, the only thing I, I think my skill set was in was, like, PPC. So, I just mm -hmm. focused on PPC and then I just outsourced everything. Mm -hmm. And then from there, like, I started to see some success and I just kept doubling down. So, I reinvested all the profits, uh, everything, and then just doubled down released a few more products and then just uh ever since then it just took off and the rest is history more and more products yeah man so so looking back i mean you you, you said you got three products that failed the first three yeah. products so yeah. looking back why did they fail what was the uh i mean now you know a lot more about amazon right mm. uh what what happened one of them i failed because uh you know the margins were great a great demand but then to the shipping like I got killed. Like I could only put in like six units per uh, box or per carton. Oh, wow. And then the shipping just destroyed me. Like how slow it was and then just how expensive it was. And then other products like too seasonal, like it was only it sold well during December, but then like terrible everywhere else. 
And then uh, one of them was just too low of a uh, margin, like just, mm. just little tiny mistakes. Like everything you could learn from probably your course, mm. like I made. And I learned the hard way, like 25, almost 30,000 deep in failure before I actually hit. So I was like, it's an expensive course, man, but it's, it's probably the best course. It's an expensive course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, but uh, yeah, it all worked out, man. They say failure is the, uh, one of the sayings I absolutely love is success is not the best teacher. Failures are. Because sure, when, you're, when you're successful, hey, everything's good. I mean, it's, it's, there's nothing to learn. Like, you're like, oh, I'm on top of the world. But when you're failing, you're like, oh, wow, that's a lesson I, I need to learn and avoid for next time, right? For sure. Um, hey, so, so I, I mean, you kind of gave us the, 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 uh, the overview of kind of your Amazon FBA journey. But I want to, we're going to come back to that because a okay. lot of people that, you know, follow me are obviously they care more about just the Amazon FBA side. But I want to talk a little bit about your, uh, you know, life before Amazon FBA. You were talking about you had a death, like near death experience. Love to kind of hear about that. And um, did that, you know, change your view about how you should live your life? Like, what are some of the things that happened? Uh, what are some things you did afterwards that, uh, you know, uh, now is benefiting your life? Yeah. Um, so there was a couple, but the, the most recent one was... Um, so I don't know. I, I think I was just too, uh, I blew out like my adrenal glands. Like I was, I was going to the gym too much. I was going out and everything. And then all of a sudden, dude, I like, I had a bunch of stress at work too. Like it was killing me, but all of a sudden, dude, I couldn't sleep for like three months. I couldn't sleep more than like 30 minutes a day. And then I wow. couldn't eat anything. 30 so minutes like I, a day, 30 minutes, like 30 minutes to like maybe an hour a day. I, I could not sleep. Wow. And I, I was just, I don't know what was going on. I was health wise going haywire. And so like, I usually walked around probably 169, 170. Dude, I dropped down to like 133. Holy crap. Yeah. And then like, I was just like, I had all this anxiety and everything from like the stresses of work and then all these things. So like, I literally thought I was, I was like, I was, it's, it's over, man. Like, like yeah. my health is gone. But then, Dude, I remember I was just in the middle of nowhere on a business trip in like San Francisco and I'm not even a religious guy, but like, dude, I went to church and I just sat there <laughs> and I was just like, you know what? Uh, just get me through this or whatever. And then I just sat there and it's like, it's just a choice, man. You just got to start making, you know, better decisions with your life and everything like that. So after a while, I just, uh, you know, kind of things tapered off and, uh, yeah, health kind of stabilized. Um, yeah. So after that, you look at it and you're like, man, I went through all that. And it's like, it changes your perspective on life. Like what fear is, what, you know, hardship is. And it's just like, you know, so that changed my whole perspective. Yeah. And then there was a, there was one right before that, like I was driving, it was like the middle of nowhere, uh, Utah. I was driving, uh, through these mountains and it like snowed and like, I got stuck in the middle of the mountains at like three, 12 a.m. at night and I had no gas. Oh, wow. And so like, I was like, dude, if I stay here, I'm going to freeze to death. So like, I literally had to, uh, my car ran out of gas. I got out and I literally just started walking, dude. Started walking for like an hour. I'm like, dude, I'm so effed right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. And then this, uh, this cop uh, pulls over or he, he passes me and then he sees me and then he picks me up. So it's like, just oh, wow. seeing it from like a different perspective, it's like, dude, like life's not that hard, really. It's like until you start seeing it from one side. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. It's interesting about what you said about the sleeping thing. I actually know someone who had a very uh, similar experience as you, but um, it was caused by these uh, molds inside his house. Uh, mm. He had he had uh, these molds that were growing inside the house, and. Um, and uh, they started, so uh, these mold were essentially getting to a system and his, mm. his system was uh, essentially was uh, full on fight or flight mode 24 seven. So he couldn't sleep and um, he went through all the therapies. He went through anything that you can imagine to treat this thing he did. He got so many different tests done and no doctors found, uh, found find, find the, uh, the mold. And then until one person basically said, Hey, I know exactly what this is. Mm. You, have the, you have the symptoms and yeah, he couldn't sleep like for 30, more than 30 minutes a day. 
um, it was, it was pretty insane. So, uh, that he said, you know, he almost died from that as well, because, uh, when you don't sleep for, apparently he didn't sleep for the first week for, he didn't sleep at all for the first like five to seven days. And he remember mm -hmm. walking around downtown. He's like, what the hell is happening? Like the buildings are going to collapse. I mean, if you don't sleep, I mean, sleep is the most important thing. If you don't sleep, you're, right. you're, you're going to go crazy. And do you, do you have an aura ring by any chance? A what? Aura ring. Mm -mm. No, I would recommend getting it, man. Um, it's probably one of the best purchases that I made in a long time. Uh, it's a little ring. It's a wearable tech that you put on your finger and it tracks your sleep. It also tracks other things mm. as well, which is uh, really cool. And it just brings a lot more transparency and data points to whatever you're tracking. So before you say, oh, I had a good night's sleep, but like, what is a good night's sleep? There's no data at all to back that up. Whereas right. wearing Aura Ring now, every single morning, you look at the app and it'll actually give you a score and it'll break down your sleep into different segments. So it's trackable, uh, it's data driven. So it's super cool. Um, cool, man. So in terms of your fitness, dude, I want to talk a little bit about that. I want to talk about Amazon side of things. So you were just like, you went on a crazy 90 day challenge and that, cha that, that transition was absolutely insane. So what kind of, um, like for fitness, the, the hardest part is, I think is not going to the gym. I think most people can go to the gym, but the hardest part is like what happens outside the gym. So diet is huge. Sleeping is huge. So, um, you have to stay super disciplined throughout that 90 days. Love to hear a little bit more about your mindset behind that. Uh, what triggered that? Were you trying, like, obviously you were hundred percent committed. What caused that commitment and how did you kind of pull through uh, those days that you didn't feel like going to the gym or you felt like, Oh, today I'll just take a break or whatever it might be. I mean, the big thing is I'm, I'm huge into goals. Like I, I, there was the challenge, there was a goal. I'm very competitive and I wanted to win, but at the end of the day, it's like, I think the key to success is self-discipline in everything you do. Like, so I just really, I know for most people, it's like the fitness side of it. It's like what you put in your mouth is one of the hardest things to discipline. So, you know, I took it as a challenge to get myself right again and just to really commit for 90 days. And then uh, it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm naturally very competitive, but I knew at the back of my mind too, that this would help me in my FBA adventure as well. So like if I could be disciplined in this, I can have discipline in all aspects. I'm not saying you have to be fit in order to succeed at this, but for me, the way it works is just having discipline in other parts of my life. And this would have been a perfect example um, that really uh, helped me there. So mm -hmm. mindset was I just, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's all about goal setting. I think uh, I wanted to just really set that goal and, and see what I could push myself, especially as I get a little bit older. I mean, it's a little easier when you're younger, but as you get a little bit older, uh, to set those new goals and, and to, for fitness wise since fast them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. So, uh, let's kind of jump into FBA now. Um, so earlier you gave us kind of an overview, but I want to kind of dive deep into, uh, all the things that you said, right? So you said, uh, at the beginning, you just went down the rabbit hole of watching YouTube videos and you were just like, screw it. I'm just going to do it. Right. Um, right. so you started ordering samples and stuff like that. So like, Talk to me a little bit about that. You started ordering samples and then you said you got some listed on Amazon and then started selling. And then you're like, oh my God, this actually works. But then you launched three products and all those failed. Is that, is that the right timeline? Is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah. So like, that's a problem. I, sometimes I get ahead of myself. Uh, yeah. So I launched the one product and it did well. And I'll be honest, like I didn't put any effort. I took the pictures myself and did the copywriting. I was like, all right, so if I actually put time into this, I can do it. Mm -hmm. So uh, I launched that one and then in December and then for the next couple of months is when I, the other three came in. Okay. So that's when I kind of started and uh, that's how it all started in the beginning. I got it. But uh, mindset wise, like, I mean, I'll, I'll share my products that I had. Like in the beginning, it was like those uh, gender reveal stuff, which I would oh. not recommend getting into. Like Interesting. It, it's very niche and it's very like it's not good but i got into that and then i got into like what was it calendars like i thought i have no idea why but i saw like the numbers trending and he was starting to kill it and so like i killed it for december and then i'm like yeah who the hell would buy a, a calendar in like february right and so i was like all right you know that's 
dumb idea. So there was a few more that, I, well, the other two I failed at, mm -hmm. but like those simple things, like again, back, if you, I would recommend a course hands down, obviously my boy, Tom Wang's course, but you're going to save yourself a world of hurt when it comes to that. And that's where um, I failed miserably in the beginning. Right. Right. Yeah, so, so how many products do you have now? Like that's live. That's like, Mm, I have, I have eight with two on the way and then I have four in the pipeline. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. So, so now that you, I guess for you, you kind of developed a system and a strategy to pick winning products, right? You kind of know what to avoid and what to look for. I do. So I have a different little, a different formula. So like some of the, the products that are, you know, you know, in the 10 to the $50,000 range. Yes, I, I have a formula, but I've been lately going after bigger ticket items, like mm. items that do like well over six figures a month. Mm -hmm. And then uh, price points that are uh, probably over like the $70 price point. Over 70? Yeah. Interesting. So like, I don't know, like for me, like I started going after the bigger ones and uh, I started going, I started doing what everyone says not to do is going to markets where you shouldn't or going mm -hmm. after products that are too competitive. Cause I think there's so many ways to do it. It's like, it's not mm -hmm. just like the one formula, low reviews, you know, a lot of, you know, people selling it in the top 10 at a decent amount of numbers. Like I just started going after products where I thought, okay, if I brand this really well, um, I could probably do it. And I started mm -hmm. doing different launch techniques. I started launching with all PPC. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, there's just so many different ways to do it. And yeah. just like getting to know people in the industry who do it yeah. um, outside the, the norm, what everyone says to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it's been, it's been pretty crazy. Like I, I thought I would never get into certain products that were obviously this lucrative, but so competitive. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's kind of my formula. I started to go after products that are very brand focused. Very so. So give me an example, man. Like let's dive deep into that. I, I love. So for me, it's it's you know um, I think everybody looks at the world from their own perspective, and it's mm -hmm. incredibly important to look at the world from as many different perspectives as possible, and only then can you make an informed decision. So I've heard other people basically staying away from products that are low ticket, that are, um, you know, low competition, because that's kind of where all the beginners go for. Right. Um, so therefore, it's going to get more saturated. And I see that argument. But at the same time, it's like there's a reason why beginners should go for those because they're the easiest ones to launch. Once right. you understand the game you can launch a high ticket item. You can launch a thousand dollar product if you want to. At that point, it's just a matter of rinse and repeat. And the only variable that's different is the actual product itself. So talk to, so have you had success with higher ticket items or is this something that you're launching in the future? No, I've actually, I launched a product like uh, two months ago. Okay. Um, very high ticket, over a uh, hundred dollars in cost. Um, in cost? Two, I'm sorry, sorry. In sales price. Okay. Um, very competitive, like thousands and thousands of reviews for like Interesting. everybody on the first page. Uh -huh. um, but then like, I just started launching with like PPC and slowly gradually building it. Mm -hmm. But like PPC is one of those things where um, I think you could launch uh, and start low. So I launched with PPC. Most people say you have a very high A cost when you launch with PPC, but I had like, 32% a cost for like my first month. So I was actually profitable on PPC while launching and I'm still ranking. So it takes a while to rank. So I'm ranking for some lower end keywords. Yeah. But, uh, but, the, but yeah. the issue, sorry to cut you off, but I think the reason why it worked out for you is because, um, your product is, you got, you got, you got room to play with. Yes. Right. You got dollar. I mean, guys, look, if, if you're selling a product that's a hundred dollars, and let's say your cost of goods sold is $30. Amazon takes another $30. You have another $30 to do essentially to play around PPC with. So that's a lot. You know, you, you got more room for error um, because you got $30 to play with versus if you launch a product for $10, Amazon takes three, your cost of goods sold is three, then you got $3 left. <laughs> you right. don't, you don't have a whole lot of room for error. So do you think that helped with, uh, with PPC? It's the fact that you have that $30 to kind of play with. 
Oh yeah, yeah, no doubt, tremendously. Like uh, it helps immensely because you have that margin error that you can play with coupons, you can play with lightning deals, you know, you can play with all these types of things, and uh, they make a huge difference, especially when you're just starting out. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like I said, with people that don't have a lot of money to start with, yeah, that I could see where you know that would not work. So how much do you invest into that product? If you're, so if, if you're selling it for how much are you selling it for a hundred or 150 or 200? Like what's the price point? Um, probably around one, anywhere from 140 to 160. Okay. So your cost is what? Like 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Uh, yeah, it's like 40, 40, about 40, 40. So how much do you have to invest into that product then? I mean, if you get a thousand units, that's like, 40 G's. Yeah. So I was done. So I, the one thing I can't stand, I kept running out of inventory on a lot of my uh, current products. Yeah. So I was like, you know what, if I'm going to commit this big already, I'm just going to um, go home run. So <laughs> I invested uh 150 K. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Into yeah. So it's, huh? Into one product. Yeah. Yeah. Into one product. Cause like, oh my God. dude, well, the thing is like, if you hit it and then you run out of inventory, you're just, you're effed dude going forward. Cause you have yeah. to re-rank and all that. So I was like, I did not want to run into this. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I invested pretty big in the beginning. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, that's my mentality now. It's like, I just can't have fear, man. You can't have that fear mindset or that scarcity mindset. You just gotta like, if you find it, you got to believe in it. You got to commit and then you just got to go, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, damn, you got balls, dude. That's, uh, <laughs> that's good for you. Uh, what, um, so with that, so is that the first high ticket product that you launched? Um, yeah, in that price point range. I mean, I have a couple in the, uh, over $50 price point, but, uh, for that sales price, yes. And uh, by the way, how well is that product doing right now? Is it, uh, is it, uh, hopefully it's doing well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's doing well. Like, uh, I think I'm just shy of, no, I'm probably doing around like 100, 110 per month, but uh, oh, wow. it definitely slowed down. It like, seems like a lot of sales slowed down during the summertime, Yeah, uh, especially since uh, Prime Day moved, I think September now. Yeah, October or yeah. something like that. Something yeah, wrong. summertime has been slow for us as well. Yeah. Um, I think that's because people are just out and about, people are traveling, people are, and obviously this year is super weird with COVID mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, Okay. So you're doing six figures a month with that product. And you said something interesting earlier. You said, is this product competitive or no? Super competitive. How, like, how do you define that? Is it, uh, I'm curious to know how you define super competitive. So you have your like major brands in the category, like you have your, you know, fortune 500 companies in there. And then you have your established Amazon brands in there and then, and so on. So you have a lot of reviews or yeah. So like I would say the top 25 have all over 4,000 reviews. Jeez. Yeah. So what, so I'm, I have to, I have to ask you this. I mean, that's a product that I would, I wouldn't touch with a five meter stick. Uh, what made you make the decision to invest 150 K into a product where the top people have 4,000 reviews and there is fortune five companies, 500 companies that you're competing with. Like what was it about that you saw that I'm not looking, I'm not, I'm, I'm not seeing here. Um, one is obviously you have a lot of room to play with. So if you have really good pricing and number two, if you have a really good product, like the product itself is really, really good. Like I, yeah. I use it daily. I test it and so on. Um, and then I would say I have a really good, uh, graphic designer, uh, someone who can create, uh, creatives and content. So on Amazon, so outside of Amazon, it's really tough to compete, I would say, but within Amazon with all the new, uh, sponsored ads, video ads and all that, if you can get a really good branding, uh, story as well as amazing, like top of the line creatives, um, you can compete. Mm. And, And that's what I noticed. Like, um, in this game, like it's just that user experience on Amazon. If you can really, uh, play with the psychology of the buyer, mm. uh, you can compete in that category. Interesting. Yeah. So you, you talk about PPC a lot. Um, so talk to me a bit, maybe about this. When did you launch this product? You said two months ago, 
Yeah, I would say actually just under two months. So like the end of May. End of May. So yeah. talk to me about maybe the launch itself. Um, uh, you know, did you start? So I don't use PPC to launch. Mm -hmm. um, I use Rank and Bank and I turn on PPC once there is five to 10 reviews on the listing. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear a little bit about your launch strategy with that particular product. So day one, your mm -hmm. units check into Amazon. Like you have, I'm sure you have your graphic design, your copywriting all ready to go. So you have great right. images. Okay. Now it's ready to launch. What does Matt do? So for me, I just go right into, uh, I throw some auto campaigns cause you gotta get some of that data. But then I try to get really creative and I play with different campaigns. Like what people don't realize, like your standard broad phrase match, that's fine. I mean, you're, you know, competitive keywords or whatever, but like I try to go after super long tail. So I'll start with a campaign that has like five words or longer. Right. And then I target like uh, campaigns that just are one word. One word. Oh yeah. Interesting. Like, Let's say you're, you're doing like one of those uh, cups, right? Those Yeti cups or whatever. Yeah. The insulated ones. Yeah. Like I will just target like cooler. Okay. And then I'll just launch it. And it's crazy. Cause like, if you launch these one word campaigns, you'll start getting hits. Like obviously you got to launch them in a broader a phrase. Yeah. Like Amazon's algorithm just hits it. If, as long as you're, you know, obviously indexed for it and so on. Right. But yeah, I just play around with PPC. Like I'll launch one word, I'll launch five, six word uh, phrase campaigns. And then you just play around with it. And then I, I, I definitely stay away from my uh, like main keywords in the beginning, especially because I have no reviews, which mm -hmm. by the way, reviews, I, I am brand registered on a few brands. So I use the Vine. Okay. Uh, Vine for me has been pretty good so far. Like I think you can go up to 30 reviews. 30 reviews, yeah. Yeah. And so like I've only had like one three-star review in the rest of them were like four and five. So uh, that's a great way to do it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I just launched with PPC playing with different keywords. And then as I see my uh, main keyword start to rank, then I'll start doing uh, like uh, keyword campaigns to, to rank them. And, and how do you, so, so do you start PPC on day one when you don't have any reviews at all? Or do day you one. wait day one? Day one, no reviews, nothing. And the reason I can do that is obviously it's a higher ticket item. Yeah. So I'll throw like a 25% coupon on there. Right. So mm -hmm. like, I think if I'm a buyer and I'm like, wow, this product looks awesome. No reviews, but 25% off mm. or inclined to buy. Right. Interesting. Yeah. So, okay. So you just use a tool, uh, you get a bunch of long tail keywords and you, um, put them in a phrase and a uh, broad campaign. Yeah. I, I don't phrase? do any exact, I do mostly broad and phrase. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll mess around with a few exact ones, but I usually don't mess with those until later. Later. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. I also have a, a couple of auto campaign strategies that I use. Like I'll go super low bid, like 15, 16 cents. And then my budget is like $8,000. Mm. And, and that seemed to work. It's crazy. Like I did a couple of those and like, I started ranking, I started getting uh, sales, like crazy sales. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so regarding your, okay. So you, you launch without PPC, you do your keyword, sorry, you launch without reviews, you do your PPC, you enroll into Vine, you put a 25% off coupon code to kind of incentivize people to buy your product. Mm -hmm. Um, shoot, there was one question I wanted to ask you about the PPC portion, um, that I forgot now. So Damn it. I forget. Uh, so yeah. So, okay. So that seems to be an interest. Oh, I remember now. So uh, PBC, I think one of the really interesting things about PBC is that you can track your uh, click through rate and your conversion on PBC quite quickly. And, you know, I, I think that's a very powerful uh, way to essentially get market feedback about your product. Because mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm, I'm very data driven with these things. And, you know, just because Matt or Tom thinks this product looks good, but if the CTR is super low, maybe our main image needs to be changed. Right. Uh, maybe the CTR is really high, but the conversion rate sucks. Well, maybe there's other things that needs to be changed. So right. do you look at those two metrics at the very beginning 
to essentially make adjustments to your listings at all? Or are you just like, you know what? Like, I know for a fact that my graphic designer creates the best graphic designs, like usually low CTR or um, uh, conversion rate is not really a huge like problem for me because I just put in the, the all that work beforehand. No, I definitely look at them, maybe not as in depth, but I, I do see them. And so when the conversion rates low, like I'll, I'll test the, the first image always. So I'll try a couple different ones mm -hmm. and it's crazy. It works. Cause like, um, I think if you use like PicFu, I think that's yeah. what it's called. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, in the beginning when I launched this high ticket item, it didn't do as great, but then as soon as I changed the main image, uh, altered a little bit, um, uh, conversions shot through the roof. Just like the positioning of it, the placement. The placement, uh, maybe the way it's angled, um, you know, if you have a couple of accessories or whatever, maybe throwing them in, whatever it is, but just, it's just the instant change of, uh, yeah, angles. That's all it is. That right. made the biggest difference in the world. Like that's the crazy thing about this. Yeah. 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 One, so, uh, one of the tips that I give my students is like, um, um, take a look at your top competitors and see how they're angling, positioning their products. And right. kind of like emulate that because uh, I, I've always believed in like success. There's success leaves clues. And if you know where to find it, you just, you should just copy it. Um, so that's kind of the tip that I have for the listeners out there about the main image and the main image is definitely the most important one. It's like the gateway to your listing, right? Exactly. Um, it's kind of like window shopping. If, if the windows are all broken uh, in the back of the store, there might be the uh, a gold chest. You're still not going to walk in the store. So uh, that's the analogy I like to use. Cool. Yeah, no, that's super interesting, man. So you don't, yeah, I mean, for your product, you can't really do any ranking bank. Like your cost is like so high. So Dude, yeah, if I did ranking bank, like 10 grand, I'm like, ugh, like yeah, I yeah. spend 10 grand on some PPC. But yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll be honest, I used ranking bank last year for all my other products. So yeah. I mean, that that's the route I would take. So um, you're, so are you only using PPC because this product's a little bit more expensive and, but you use ranking bank for um, some other like lower ticket items. Is that what you're saying? Or like, what, what, what are you? Yeah, I would say depending on the category, depending on, you know, the product itself, I'll use either or a combination of the two. But, uh, right. for this one, I just, yeah, it was too expensive to rank and bank. I couldn't do it. It was like, yeah. it wasn't feasible. Right. So I'm curious to know as well. I mean, okay. So obviously reviews is super important on Amazon. Um, based on your experience of launching using PBC, how does even one review or five reviews or 10 reviews impact your performance of PBC? Oh, tremendously. Like when you have like no reviews, like my A cost was pretty high. And then as soon as you hit those barriers, like 15, 30 and so on, mm -hmm. just the, the A cost itself comes down, your conversion skyrockets and the crazy things, dude, you get like one or two, like one star, dude, just kills your listing in the mm -hmm. beginning. Obviously yeah. it doesn't matter if you have hundreds, but yeah, it, it makes a huge part. And that's, that's the tough part, um, especially with launching with PPC and then having low reviews in a competitive category. So Right. Do you use, um, do you use any tools to manage your PPC or are you doing it all manually in the spreadsheet? So I just hired an agency. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it was just way too much. Like I, I was spending way too much time in it. So I hired yeah. it out. So interesting. Yeah. How did you go about vetting that agency? Cause I mean, you're someone who probably is, it seems like you're very knowledgeable in the PPC space. So, um, how'd you come across the agency and, and how did you vet them? Yeah, I was actually on uh, Upwork and then oh. I couldn't find anyone. So I went to Fiverr and then I just started, I'm, I'm part of the Helium t uh, 10 Elite group. So oh, you there's are? a lot okay. of kind of some big sellers in there and they kind of recommended someone. Okay. And how I chose them was one, obviously got to know what they're talking about on a very in-depth level. But two is that they start to mess around not only with the keywords, but like brand, uh, video, PPC, mm. um, all the other ones, sponsor displays all, all across the board. Cause there's some agencies that just focus on keywords. Right. But, uh, the, the one that does the entire suite, cause I think, uh, I'm really getting to the video side of things and the conversions are crazy. Interesting. Yeah. how where did you get the videos done? Um, I got, I hired actual a graphic designer in house okay. uh, and a video, uh, like a 3d render person. Yeah. Got it. Got so. it.
So how big is your team now? Uh, are you still doing everything kind of by yourself? Obviously you got this new PPC agency, but uh, how, what about other things? So I have four people, not like, I don't actually have them hired, but they're my team. Like, so right. I have one social media customer service person overseas. And then I have one person that does uh, all everything Amazon, but then also branches off into Shopify, Wish, Google Shopping, Facebook Shops. And then I have the one uh, graphic designer and then the agency is the um, PPC. So, Got it. So what does your day-to-day -day look like now? Is it just more about focusing on launching more products? And also, are you trying to build a brand or are you launching kind of like, because at the beginning you said, oh, I saw calendars, I saw gender reveal stuff. Like, you know, that's not much of a brand, right? So now are you kind of transitioning into building a, that long-term brand or what does that look like? 100% brand like this the, the when I try to go in the beginning it was all about you know niche product and, and it's not as competitive but I think in 2020 beyond it's all brand like I'm trying to launch a brand and then diversify onto other e-commerce platforms and then eventually I guess end goal is to be able to sell your mm -hmm. company and brand so I'm 100% everything I launch now is all brand specific got it got it and it do you have just one brand or do you have multiple brands now I have three you have three brands and is that all under one store or multiple stores? So it's all under multiple stores. And okay. then I'm actually just ready to launch a new, uh, seller central account. So yeah. got, I don't think you need approval anymore from Amazon. That's, that's what I heard. Yeah, um, yeah. but I never had any issues with opening up. I mean, I have, I have a lot of Amazon seller central accounts. I've never run yeah. any into any issues at all with any of them. So, yeah, I think as long as you make sure you have a different bank and credit card, I think you're, Bank account, credit card, your phone. Yeah, yeah. All that got to be different. Cool. So what does your day-to-day -day look like now? So now, like, now I'm, I'm actually continually, I just started this process of uh, getting more people to work with. So I'm recording uh, videos every day on, and then training them. Okay. But uh, yeah, I'm starting to find more free time during the day. So like, I was like, damn, I should start traveling more. But shit, <laughs> I can't because this whole state of uh, the world. Yeah. Um, but now, so I'm just looking at more products to launch. Like I, most people don't realize, like, I think you have to start gearing up for Q4, like now, like you got to yeah. get everything in place. Yeah. So yeah. I'm really focusing on that. Just making sure I have uh, a few more products to launch. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing in the day to day right now. But, uh, it's hard. Like once you start, once you start doing everything, it's hard to kind of let go of everything that you're doing. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I'm just kind of in that transition right now. Got it. Got it. And that's cool. Yeah, no, Q4, definitely. I mean, this Q4, hopefully it'll be bigger than ever um, because more right. people are shopping at home. And uh, yeah, no, for the listeners out there right now, like this is definitely a very good time to start preparing for Q4. How do you prepare for Q4? It's just more for supply chain, like your sales, depending on the category, um, your sales can ex literally double, if not triple. So I would highly recommend um, taking a look at the market trends. So I use Fire Launch. You can actually look at the past year's trend of the entire market, and then just take a look at the historical trends uh, in Q4. So you know if sales double, hey, you should probably order a little bit more inventory. And there's also like these delays when things get busy on China's end, right? Um, everybody's ordering more products, shipping. There's usually some delays. So give yourself some buffer time as well. For sure. So cool, man. I mean, that's super interesting. Um, I definitely heard of people launching high ticket items um, and it's been working really well for them. But yeah, what you said about launching something that's very competitive, that's pretty interesting because they, you know, it, it could have not worked out, I guess. Uh, 150K is a pretty large investment. So good for you for taking that risk. And it seems like it's paying off. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely risky, but I think in this game, it's like, if you just want to do it for a side hustle and fun, that's cool. But like, if you really want to, uh, you know, become Tom Wayne someday, uh, you really gotta, you gotta take those chances and you just gotta have, you gotta believe in yourself and have faith. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, it's like, uh, I think you talked about it. I think you had a post like a week and a half ago about uh, failure, right? Yeah. No matter how much you fail, it's like the people that persevere uh, and push on the people that succeed yeah so along those lines and also just uh just, just believing man you got to have faith that you can uh do this so yeah yeah no no absolutely 100 um kind of uh, 
just to wrap up here, um, I kind of want to go back to, you know, again, using PVC because that's a, a very intriguing to me and I'm diving deep, uh, a little bit deeper into PPC right now. And again, there's so many different strategies, right? Like you have this strategy, someone else have that strategy. It's not you're right or he's wrong. It's just different ways to play the game. Like, you know, uh, there's so many different strategies, but having said that, so you launch, you, in, uh, you, you get into Vine and you use PPC only. So for, for those long tail keywords, you have a, like how, do you have an aggressive bid for them or, uh, just to suggest the bid or how aggressive do you go for those long tail keywords? I go pretty aggressive. Like, uh, I realize when you're launching a new product, when you're competing against people that are already out there, if your bid's not high, you're not going to get any impressions. Right. So, uh, like my bids are like three, $4 per uh, word, a keyword. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty high. Mm. Interesting. But then I use that bid down one, right? Not the like fixed bid or anything. So I use bid down. So it usually doesn't hit that number always. Yeah. Right, right. No, that makes sense. So in terms of the product life cycle, like, okay, so you, you, you bid, um, you bid, you know, pretty aggressive for these keywords. Do you start seeing, how, how do you see your organic rank? How does that impact your organic rank? Um, because I know with PBC, it's kind of interesting in a sense that you put up the keywords, you put up a, a, a basket of keywords and then kind of am like customers will buy your product. And obviously the more customers that the, if there's more customers buying your product through that keyword, then you get, you know, higher, higher, higher ranking for that specific keyword. With right. Rankin Bank, what we do is we pick two to three keywords at the very beginning and we just start ranking for those keywords. So we know exactly which keywords we're targeting. Whereas I right. feel like with PPC, you kind of don't, you have all these, you have like hundreds of keywords and any of them might pop up. Is that kind of your experience with ranking using PPC? It's just like, you're putting all the, you're putting all the phrases out there. You're putting all the keywords there. And then you're kind of letting Amazon determine where you should be uh, and which keywords you should be on page one. Yeah. So Amazon kind of determines where you, which keywords are working. And then let's say you start breaking in the top 25, top 20 for a certain keyword. So then uh, I create like campaigns around that keyword, all different ways, right? Like whether it's a long tail, whether it's exact, broad, whatever. And then I just try to I put more emphasis on that campaign. And then you slowly start seeing the keyword rise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how long uh, typically like with rank and bank, I mean, we can see results in like literally a week, two weeks, uh, with PBC, historically speaking, based on your experience, how long does it actually take to rank, let's say to the top five, obviously depending on the keyword, but kind of like generally speaking, if it's a uh, very competitive keyword, I would say like 15 K 20 K plus it takes a while. It's a, it's a long-term game for sure. Right. But like right. some of those smaller keyword like five grand or less. Um, you, I, I think I got there within like week and a half, two weeks on one of them. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I got, maybe got lucky. I got like, you know, quite a few buys on one keyword. Mm -hmm. uh, but you see it shoot straight up for the lower end ones. But the long ones, the big, big ones. Yeah, that takes a while. Jeez. And I'm still, I'm tr still trying to rank. Yeah. Got it. And do you use any sort of like <clears throat> insert car strategies at all? Um, you know, do you, yeah. Do you use any insert card strategies? Yeah. So for insert card, obviously you want to not break any terms of service, but like, uh, like I have insert cards and in a couple of them where like you want to create your own fan base, right? So right. like they'll sign up as a warranty or a part of your, you know, maybe you want a, a testing group, right? You want like, Hey, you know, for future products launch, here's a, you know, sign up with this link and you will be, uh, you know, subject to, you know, huge discounts or free products or whatever, something like right. that. Yeah. Right. Cool, man. Sweet. Well, no, that's awesome, man. Well, I mean, you've, what you've done is obviously you've, you've gone full in, uh, kind of like exactly you're, you're, you should be my buddy, Dan. He's a uh, very similar story as you. Uh, he just went full in, man. Uh, and that's what I find is the people successful in this game are not the ones that are kind of like, you know, half in, half out kind of tipping, you know, they're just like, you know what, like this obviously works. We're just going to go full in. We might not know like what's going to happen, but that's the risk we're willing to take. And I'm going to figure this out kind of like what you said earlier. It's like, 
I'm either to succeed I'm, or I'm going to die. And like, I think when people have that mentality, you usually don't end up dying. Uh, you usually end up succeeding, right? So yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like you, you have to put it all out there. Like if you really want to, like I said, be to, become Tom Wayne, you got to, you got like, I'll tell you a story. Like before last year, Q4, dude, I was dead broke. I opened up three credit cards to pay for inventory going into Q4. Wow. Like you, and I maxed them out. Although, you know, those uh, 0% APR 12 year month, whatever. Like it's like, but the thing is that you look at it, it's like, do I want to live this nine to five and be this uh, like nine to five work slave over the next 40 years? Or do I want to actually take this chance and become something, right? Or live a life on my own terms. Like right. it's just, you know, you got to have that mindset and just, you got to slowly build that up. But um, like you said, that's the only way to, to, to sort of um, succeed at this game, I think. Right. At that level. Right. Um, cool, man. Well, hey, look, I appreciate you coming on the call. And uh, I think people are getting tons and tons of value. And, you know, definitely upload this on the podcast, YouTube channel, Facebook group. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Well, Matt, like I said, I, I you know, this interview really inspired me. And, and the whole point of me interviewing folks like you is, is like, yeah, I've been kind of comfortable on my Amazon FBA business, to be honest. And now listening to you just going balls to the walls, I'm like, kind of like, what the hell am I doing? So yeah, man, I appreciate you coming on the call. And uh, yeah, thanks for sharing your story with us. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, man. Have a good weekend and uh, yeah, do your thing, man. Yeah, thank you so much, man. All right, guys, if you guys enjoyed this, hit the like button, leave a comment and we'll talk soon.